This is the backyard pitching facility producing 95 mile an hour arms regularly. And we had the opportunity to go visit, check it out, meet with some of the guys who work there and just kind of figure out like what goes into the training program and how is this place producing such elite baseball players. But first, let me take a step back. We flew from Boston to Tempe, Arizona to film some content before the All-Star Week in LA. The night before we linked up with Eric Sim, did a podcast with him. We linked up with Mike Pasco and the guys from the program just to chop it up, talk a little bit of baseball. So we linked up with them, said what's up, and then we filmed the podcast afterwards. And this is how the night went. So make sure to subscribe if you guys are new. Pocket Radar giveaway at 20k subs don't you guys forget about that so without further ado let's get right into the video Mike Pasco, how you doing? I'm good, man. Thank you guys for coming. I'm um, just hanging out. Just out here in Arizona, Tempe. Let's yeah, just to set the scene, we literally just set this up like last second. Like mm -hmm. I think you texted me like two hours ago. You're like, yo, pull up. We we're trying to find a time, and then we're here, and now we set it up. It's a podcast, so we're ready to go. Loving it, man. Um, Why you guys are here? So yeah, man, tell you, tell me your story. Like, what are you about? Yeah, so I'm uh, from New York originally. Um, since I've been six years old, been playing. Um, you know, I was always that small kid, like you know, shorter, um, not as big. So. Growing up, I was always like, able to hang on to t good teams, but uh, not the best player necessarily, not the hardest thrower. But uh, I always felt like I had this quick arm. I, used, you know, I liked pitching. Uh, I was a two-way up until through high school and didn't really throw hard enough to go to D1 or anything. So I went to Juco route and I walked down at San Jack in Houston. Uh, took a big chance myself. I was about 86, 88 in high school. So like back then as a righty, I was like, okay. Um, so I went there and... Um, Really developed with Woody Williams, who's now the coach of Texas for pitching, and um, he helped me a lot. I gained some good velo, um, but my sophomore year I was up to 97, still at 5'8", <laughs> like 180 pounds. So yes. it was kind of crazy that two-year um, period at San Jack. Um, you know, I, my first year I didn't really pitch a lot, so I was in the weight room a lot, working out. And my sophomore year I kind of just like went out there and pitched and just did the best I could, and uh, got drafted by the Blue Jays that sophomore year. So I went into professional baseball at 20. So my life kind of changed really quickly, especially from like 18 to 20. 18, I was just nobody going to walk on into JUCO, and then 20 years old, I'm playing for the Blue Jays. So it was kind of crazy. That's wild. So what was that velo transformation? That was yeah. Kind of, was so, like, yeah, that, I know that sounds crazy. crazy. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah. So my freshman year, I was like 88, 91. Um, you know, just started with the plyo balls and stuff, and like some weightlifting stuff. And then my sophomore year, I really, really hit the weight room hard, and just started really looking at my throw and how it sequenced and everything, and how I can maximize, you know, my body. I had a quick arm, but um, how can I put all this together to create velocity that's like draft ready, professional ready? And so my sophomore year when that all kind of came together, it was just about pitching well or not. And I was consistently throwing strikes with three good pitches, a good change up, good slider. So, you know, I was able to get a chance. The Blue Jays took a chance on me. And then going into professional baseball that summer, I was like anywhere from 95 to 98, which wow. was just insane. Yeah, it was just wild. coming out. And um, it, I think that was pure adrenaline and just, you know, being in the moment of just how crazy it's been that that road there uh -huh. um so that's kind of the highest i've ever gone up to is 98 so far but uh, and ever since that, i've been like a mid to upper nines guy so just from what i've learned over the couple years of like weightlifting and athleticism and the sequence on the mound of throwing and kind of just drills i can do wherever i can do have that edge you know just keep maximizing my you know potential as a thrower so what was that moment that was kind of like you shifted your goals from, you know, transferring to a D1 four year mm -hmm. to, you know, I could actually get drafted. Yeah, so that sophomore fall, I committed to St. John's in New York. Um, they actually gave me a full scholarship, which is such a blessing because um, I grew up with a lot of buddies going there and playing really good D1 ball there in New York. So when they offered me a full ride, I had to take it. And then once I committed, I was like, well, I guess there's only left to, to do is go pitch well this spring and try and get drafted and go try and go win a national championship. So. We went to the Junior College World Series and just came up short to Chipola in the Natty. And then, you know, a couple weeks later I was drafted. So I ended up making that goal happen. And it, it was kind of an easy decision for me to go play pro ball. It's just yeah. something I dreamed of since I was a kid. Definitely. So, so that was that switch. Tell us about where we are right now. I forgot to even say yeah. that. Yeah. So what, what is this creation? Yeah, so we're in Tempe, Arizona. This is called The Program. Uh, me and my buddy Cam Hatch started this out here. He's from Connecticut. He couldn't make it tonight. But um, so we've been doing this since September of 2020 or 2021, sorry. And um, this is kind of our training facility, you know, it's a house um, just in a normal neighborhood right by Arizona State. And, um, you know, guys kind of find us through Instagram and, you know, want to train with us based off, you know, kind of our workouts and, you know, what they see us doing on the mound and everything. So, um, you know, 
it's kind of been still a short process of like you know getting guys here and everything but this summer's been a lot of fun you know a lot of guys been pulling up throwing gas and um it's been so much fun for me to coach and also be like one of the athletes here too who has the highest velo ever um, I, I do i do right now yeah what is it 96.7 okay That's yeah I'm, well we got a pen tomorrow i'm thinking it's gonna go up so i'll have to update you guys do you have a pen this. tomorrow yeah what are you, what are you, what's your goal well lately i've been 95 96 in like every pen i've and lately i've been working on just being ready to go pitch and play i have that feeling that i'm gonna you know, go play again this year still um but tomorrow I'm feeling like I can get to up to like a 97, 98. So I'm just gonna kind of let some fastballs rip. So we're gonna update. The, we're gonna yeah, no, there's no doubt seeing the yeah, video and everything. I'm so excited. Too. Yeah, so that's kind of my uh, plan for tomorrow. I'm um, just kind of throw gas and let it rip. So, if you could just break down the inspiration behind the whole place, I know like mm -hmm. kind of came together slowly. And yeah. All that. So I mean, growing up, um, what's crazy is that when I was 10 years old and like I was struggling to kind of make the all-star team in my town and everything, my dad was like you know, what are you going to do to get better? Are you going to work hard? Like, and I was like, yeah, I really want to, you know, be one of the best players around and make like, you know, all-star team with all my buddies. So out of nowhere, one day I wake up and there's a batting cage in my backyard. So I was like, wow, okay, I'm going to use that every day. And a couple months after that, my dad saw me using that all the time. He built me a pitcher's mound. So I started doing that, throwing bullpens to him in the backyard. So ever since I was young, like when I went to work, it was usually the backyard. So um, being able to kind of recreate that now at an older age and you know from the, the knowledge I've obtained and kind of give that to everybody else that comes here has been like such a blessing and like it just keeps it fun and like you know it keeps us as kids man you don't want you know baseball can kind of get you know all over the place sometimes and you know mentally and emotionally and you, I feel like guys come back here to get better and a lot of it's you know just kind of simplifying it like we were when we were kids so the back here kind of gives you that feeling. It's a kid game. It is. My first pin here, I was like 84 to 86. I think I might've hit 87 one time. And then uh, fast forward three weeks and um, 4th of July pin, I uh, PR at 93.5. My wow. God. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting like one to three. And you know, I've, I've never hit over 90 in my life. I hit 90 one time in end game ever. So it's amazing. the velo jump that I made um, since coming here is, you know, really, it, I mean, it blows my mind. Yeah. Well, first off, congrats. Thank yeah, you, right? I appreciate it. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. But yeah, what do you attest that velo gain to? Just the different um, training philosophy or just I think I think maybe the the, the, the different uh, training philosophy is uh is super unique, you know, with the Russian lunges and just like what they believe in and um kinda like their methodology and what they think works, you know, like bands. We don't really do a whole lot of bands and like plyos against the wall. We don't really do it uh, a lot of that and just I think living in house, I live in house here with the older guys, and I get to see what uh, Mikey does on a day to day, uh, um, you know, on a day to day basis. It was really helpful for me, and just you know, learning what a pro guy does on a you know twenty four hour schedule. That's right. mm -hmm. I think that's the ticket. Um, right. Yeah, the environment's everything here, in my opinion. So that's what I think he's been you know most um, having fun with is just like being around everybody here and like learning as much as he can, being a sponge, you know, just soaking awesome. it all in. And just having fun with it. Yeah. Exactly. That's what Star has been doing. It's been awesome to watch and just help him, you know, with his career. So I guess what I would ask is, is this something anybody can do? If you're a college pitcher, there's is levels. it? levels. Yeah. Yeah, there's That's levels to it. I, I like think um, yeah. high school kid, it depends on where they're at. It might just be more throwing and mechanics on the mound. Or if it's a pro guy who's like, hey, I used to throw this hard, but now I'm not. Might be some more physical stuff that he might have messed up throughout his last couple of years or injury or whatever it may be. Just a combination of stuff. So I think there's levels to the program that uh, everybody is different, but um, everybody can get better here, in my opinion. Just from the environment and from what we know and how much we care and the passion we have. Like, everybody here gets individual work. You know, it's not like a volume model. Everybody comes here and it's, it's gotcha. different. It's, it's family to me, man. It really is. Yeah. And That's so awesome, you just come out here for the summer, you just apply and only mm -hmm. select number of people get accepted or how does yeah, that I mean, work? It kind of just depends on, um, you know, where you're at in your career. If we think it's a good fit, um, staying at the house or not, um, they might have to stay out of the house, uh, depending on who you are. Um, summer has been crazy. We've been getting a lot of college guys and some pro guys too that have been bouncing around with their jobs. And in the fall, once the off season starts, we get a lot of pro guys right off the bat. And so... The good mix of like pro guys when we first start in the off seasons. I mean, that's it for me, you know. And the rest of the guys that come here, we get ready for six months for yep. spring training the next year. So, but in the summer, the college guys come in for like weeks at a time and um, kind of, you know, whatever they need, they get out of it. You know, whether it's on the mound or in the weight room, like I said. Um, but for stars, it's been kind of you know, a combination of everything. 
and um, he's just been soaking it all in, been doing a great job. I'm super proud of him. Awesome. Yeah. More on a broad, like, velo gain, uh, you know, mm-hmm. in that perspective. For younger guys, like, everyone, you know, I bet if you Google, like, how to gain velocity, it's just, like, 50 different things. Like, there's yeah. no, like, one concrete answer, because there isn't one concrete no. answer. But for younger guys out there who are looking to gain velo, what's your biggest piece of advice? I would say really look at how you're throwing the baseball. Like, how is your body moving to throw the baseball? Um, everybody wants to go in the weight room to create velocity. Everybody wants to think it's more weight or more load i think it's how how are you looking at your throw and how much focus is in each throw you know everybody will go out there and throw 100 throws but what was the thought process behind each 100 were you working on one specific thing and you know over and over again telling yourself like you know this is what's going to help me get one percent better today or were you just throwing 100 to be like hey i threw today and got my work in so i've been you know really diving into how your body should move on the mound the sequence how you can maximize it, you know, me being 5'8", that's kind of how I've been able to throw so hard. I just want to, you know, give that to these guys because they're a lot more uh, dynamic and athletic than I, you know, should have been. I mean, I've kind of advanced myself just from a lot of hard work, but these guys have so much natural talent that I necessarily didn't have. So they can make weight quicker and easier jumps than I did. So, I mean, just looking at the throw in a different way and just trying to maximize everybody's potential in their sequence down the slope, that's kind of been like my biggest, you know, emphasis for getting guys to gain velocity here yeah and then for so uh, kind of on that same token like for pro guys versus like high school guys or even middle school like younger mm-hmm. people what's the biggest difference you see in their day-to-day yeah so young guys are kind of all over the place you know with like the focus of it you know they kind of just think if they just throw and practice enough you know they'll throw harder but the pro guys know like it's the little things it's like how am i prepping my body to throw how am i looking at throwing like i just said and then how am i taking care of my you know my body after am i eating right am i sleeping right Am I putting the right supplements in my body? Am I eating the right food? So that's a pro versus like a middle school kid where the middle school kid probably goes and eat McDonald's after. And that's fine, you know, they're a kid, you know, whatever. But learning over the years, like how can I get 1% better? And it's those things, you know, arm care, what you put in your body, like, you know, what do I eat? Everything like that, you know, how I sleep, all that stuff is important. You know, people, are, people when they get to the pro level realize that because it starts to take a toll on them as they get older and they're not yeah. kids anymore. Yep. We always want to stay like kids. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Definitely. What's the, uh, what's the biggest thing you think baseball has taught you throughout your career and life? Failure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a Failure. great answer. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. my career and my path through this whole game has been unbelievable and, uh, I wouldn't change it for the world though. It's made me a better man, you know, at the end. And um, I really believe that it it gives me a chance to make a bigger impact than I ever could have just through, you know, the hardships and failures I've been through. It gives me a chance to relate to almost every guy that's come here so far. And I hope that continues, you know, but that failure and like, you know, the hard stuff you do go through, you know, during it, it's been terrible and it's almost made me want to quit, but uh, I haven't. And, you know, honestly, lately it's been really pushing me to be better every day, you know, just be like, this is for a reason. And, um, seeing these guys come here and you know get better and like have these gains so fast it's been just showing me like everything i went through was for a reason yeah. so and i guess i would ask you is how is that different perspective as a coach versus a player mm-hmm. like i guess like just myself coaching little kids i feel like it makes me a better player yeah, and it makes me a better coach exactly. how is that yeah so during covid in 2020 i started coaching little kids because you know we were doing summer ball there and i was just in new york kind of stuck doing nothing so i was training myself and what I noticed when I was doing that is how pure the game was at that level. And it gave me that fun again, where at that time, I'd just been released by the Blue Jays and really didn't know where my life or anything was going, but I knew I was going to be around baseball. So those kids that summer really, you know, gave me another chance, to, you know, as a player again, and, you know, and knowing that down the road I'd be a good coach, just the way, you know, that they interacted with me and how much fun it was. And then now getting into college and pro guys, you know, I'm still kind of a young guy, I'm 24, and I'm still able to relate to their generation as well and also keep that, you know, older perspective and that pro you know experience that i've had and give that knowledge to them so you know that the difference be, between being a player and coach has been like you know different but at the same time it's kind of came together for me and made me a better baseball person yeah yeah yep. so where do you see yourself in like three to five years because you're still a young guy like yeah. at 24 like yeah i mean where do you want where do you want to be versus where do you think you, i mean i guess you gotta yeah, reach those where goals where do you want to be i still see myself pitching in the big leagues i yep. really do and uh, i don't know how i don't know when but i know that's gonna happen one day and i'm gonna believe in that and but as soon as as long as i'm here in arizona to coach these guys i'm giving them everything i can but i'm always still training i'm always still throwing because it's what i love to do and i'm always ready for the call i'm ready to go play, pitch in the game whenever i can um and so i just think that's where I'm at. You know, I'm either ready to pitch in the big leagues or it's going to be a good coach, you know, for wherever I'm at. So is it kind of the thing where any team calls, you're ready, like independent, mm-hmm. minor leagues, 
Yeah, so what does that it, look it like? It was independent until um, I started the program with Cam, and ever since then I've kind of been like eh, affiliate ball, or I'm here, just because um, it's kind of hard to go Indian ball with the low paychecks and stuff. Definitely. Where I'll, I'll kind of wear it if I'm in the minor leagues having a shot to show. Um, but there's a lot going on here, and I'm like kind of important, you know, the video side and like the coaching side. So if I'm not going to you know have a chance of playing in the big leagues, I'll probably be here doing this stuff in Arizona. Definitely. Yeah, how important do you think has social media been in just even just like learning a new thing, like with learning social media yeah. and then like kind of incorporating it? How yeah, that's been huge that for been? me, honestly, just to meet new people, make connections. I mean, I came out here and like right away I was able to meet guys I never thought I could meet, you know, like Eric Sim and a bunch of pro guys that do live at bats with Frankie Montas, ace pitcher, and like just meeting guys that I've wanted to be around and like soak up information from, you know, that's above me. And so I've been able to pass that along to guys like Steyer and you know, the rest of the guys at the house. So. Social media has given me a chance to show who I am, my personality, and uh, how much I love this game and how much I want to make an impact. That's awesome. Yeah. And I guess uh, if we could transition into what we got over here, I don't know how well we can see that, but, uh, you know, you guys are taking this ARIA Collective glove situation to a whole nother level, unique, creative, and as we talked about earlier today, it's where the game is going. Mm -hmm. So if you could touch on that a little bit. Yeah, so my roommate Zoe is part of the ARIA Collective. Um, I met him through Jimmy Hill, also part of the ARIA Collective. And uh, ever since he moved in, I was, I've been able to see how cool these gloves are and how creative. And um, this is where the game's going. You yeah. know, I want it to be fun. I want it to be like, you know, we're kids again. And that's what ARIA is doing. And um, I just like the art aspect of it. You know, gloves kind of get boring sometimes, you know, and uh, they're doing something really cool. And I really see them being the big future in baseball. Yeah. So are you thrown with them? I'm, I'm trying. I mean, we're getting to that. You know, once I'm back playing, I'm probably going to have an RA glove on. So, Love you know, that. once that happens. But, uh, awesome. you know, I'm probably going to have to pick a ice cream flavor that I like. Right. I don't know which one yet. They're all so cool. It kind of yeah. makes me think of, like, the new age versus the old age of mm -hmm. baseball, right? Where, like, you're supposed to have just, like, a simple glove that no one, you know, yeah. like, doesn't stand out. Like, these are the opposite, which I think mm -hmm. is great. So what do you think of that, like, new age versus old age baseball debate? Yeah, I think, you know, there is some old age stuff that we should, you know, always respect and have. But uh, the new age, it's, we should always be evolving. We should always be trying to be different and, you know. Um, this creativity that you know we can bring to baseball can attract more younger guys and keep the game growing and pass it along to you know kids that need that. You know, baseball has been so important for me. You know, to you know just have something in life that I feel like you know I have a really big purpose in. And part of that has been like it's been giving me an opportunity to create and you know be myself. So I think what Ari is doing and giving a kid a glove like that could do the same thing. Awesome, Love that. awesome. Yeah. I guess uh, my question for you is, you know. With that younger side, I mean, still very young over here, but, you know, yeah. you're coming up in JUCO. Like, how do you feel with that creative, new-age side of baseball? Like, I mean, looking at those gloves, they're amazing. But what do you think of it? Um, I think that it's a, it's a great way to approach the, the younger generation um, because I feel like, you know, baseball is such a, like, a old age, or at least that's how it has been for the last 20, 30 years, that I think we're kind of transitioning into something, you know, uh, more fun, new, you know, with the ice cream gloves and um, kind of bringing like an artistic um, eye into baseball. I think that's a great way to uh, attract new fans and to attract a whole new, you know, because the game's changing and evolving so much um, that the old generation of baseball is kind of being pushed out, you know, by this new generation. And um, what Aria is able to do uh, with the gloves is a perfect example of that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great place to wrap up. I think, Definitely. Yeah, I think yeah, we got. That was, that was. I think that was perfect. Like, you know, we kind of got everything we needed to get that's without a script too. We yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we don't need that shit. Yeah, thanks so much for hopping yeah, on. Thank man. you so you much. Yeah, thank you guys so for much. having me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Having Star thank too, you guys man. so much for having yeah, us on. This yeah. is awesome. I've been a fan um, for a while now. I've been following your guys' social media. Thank you, man. Yeah, and I just think what you guys are doing. For the game Same of baseball and for the sport, yeah, right. It's trying, so yeah. important, you know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. And it's awesome to have a young perspective like that going mm -hmm. through JUCO and just yeah. being here, like yeah. on the show. I mean, great stuff. Super, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. sweet. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Thank you for setting up Thanks this so table much, man. too. Yeah. Yeah. That was lit. It was Thank awesome. you, man. Yeah, that was Thank super. You. Thank awesome. you so much. I appreciate. it. Hit a pen, I pull up heavy in the layout on a Eddie. I got three of those from the valley. The new Dior's not for belly. Stay that money, I for Perry. I shoot jumpers, call me Larry. Then they ain't Yonkers, I need a Navy. Don't need a sponsor, hurry to heaven. They callin' me the main head to slow down, I done bought too many chains. Call a robot the engine.